Sustainability is a bit of a buzzword at the moment and it's something we're going to be hearing a lot more about in the months and years ahead. Recently the EU published their Green Deal policy document and within that document then we have the EU Farm to Fork strategy and the EU Biodiversity strategy. And what's glaringly obvious from that is that there's going to be a huge increase in the sustainability in terms of food production. Sustainability can be broken down into three main areas. Um, firstly, you're looking at economic sustainability. So we're looking here at um, making sure that everybody along this, the food supply chain is economically viable. And you all know that farmers are probably the weakest link in that supply chain. Secondly, then we're looking at social sustainability. Is society happy with the way we're producing food? So we're looking at things like animal welfare, um, the drugs we use with our, on our cattle and sheep, and the products we put on our crops, like pesticides. And lastly, then we have uh, environmental sustainability. Is we're looking at climate change, water quality, and biodiversity. And for the purposes of today's video, we might concentrate a little bit on the biodiversity and see what farmers might do to improve it on their farms. People might ask, why is biodiversity important? It's, it's important because we need, we need to protect it and it's essential to life. It provides us with food, with health, with medicines, materials, recreation and well-being. You know, healthy ecosystems filter our air and water and keep our climate in balance and pollinate and fert fertilise crops, among other things. Currently, we're in the midst of a biodiversity crisis with global population of wild species having fallen by 60% over, over the past 40 years. And in Ireland, roughly one in every five species that has been assessed as threatened with ex extinction. Now, nationally, we have many different types of farming systems. We have some very extensive farming systems. And recent surveys tend to show that within these farms, you find a lot of high nature value farmland, which is excellent for biodiversity. And then at the other end of the scale, we have very intensive farming systems. And typically, they're just not as biodiverse as, as, as the extensive ones. What these farmers should aim to do is take a look at their existing habitats and aim to retain and maintain these. Okay, And then start looking at new habitats. Example here would be to look at your linear habitats, like your hedgerows, your watercourses, your field margins and stone walls. Um, hedgerows should be fit for birds and bees. So we're aiming for a hedge at least a metre and a half high that contains flowering trees and shrubs for bees. Field margins should be at least a metre and a half wide, uncultivated, not sprayed and allowed to grow out. And water courses um, should be fenced off from livestock and this margin allowed to grow out also. And cattle shouldn't have access to drinking points along the water courses. Once our existing habitats have been looked at, then we can think about creating new ones. In terms of new habitats, examples here might include, you know, planting a grove of native trees, planting new hedgerows, or planting a crop of wild bird cover as we are in today. Um, so it's a crop of oats and linseed, which is specifically grown for overwintering birds as a food source for them. And lastly, um, all farmers have areas around their farms that they mow and trim regularly. And as you know, over manicured areas are really bad for wildlife. So why not try to leave some of this area unmown and allow those plants to grow flower and set seed and this will be excellent for biodiversity and wildlife in general.